Question, what's a rubber band trick? Fluid tripod head, rubber band, ding! There you go! Still here? Okay, so what's the point of this? Up until now, many people have asked me how I achieved such a smooth pan. First off, thanks, and second, it wasn't always like this. Take a look at my videos from the pre-rubber band trick era. Clearly, very shaky and embarrassing. So let's stop looking at that and look at what I found out. So, with the traditional panning method, I grab onto the handle and start panning. When that happens, I create a direct connection between me and the tripod. Therefore, any motion I create, intentional or not, will be picked up by the tripod head and the camera. Now, that can work in your favor especially if you have really stable hands, and it gives you extra control authority. But I suck at hand panning, so I thought there's got to be a better way. While there are many ways out there, one of the most cost-effective solutions would be the rubber band trick. Now I should note that this trick only works on fluid heads. No pistol grips, ball heads, or any solid and solid systems, only fluid heads. So how does it even work? So here, instead of controlling the handle, you control the rubber band. It helps to regulate the panning motion by damping any force inputs, including any shakes and jerks, to give you a smoother pan. Basically, the rubber band becomes a simple damper. And you can adjust the effectiveness by choosing thicker or thinner bands. Thinner bands offer better damping. I chose them for this reason. However, keep in mind that the rubber band damps any force you put into it, including the forces you need for panning. In other words, the more damping you get, the less control authority you have. And that brings us to some drawbacks and considerations to think about. When you're trying out this method for the first time, one of the first things you'll notice is the lag between when you want to pan and when the tripod actually responds. Because of the damping, the reaction no longer feels instantaneous. Instead, it feels slow and unresponsive. Remember, you're no longer controlling the tripod directly now. You're controlling the rubber band, and it gets to decide what the motion is. And because you're not in direct control anymore, other factors such as wind and temperature that didn't matter as much in the past suddenly do. Wind, for example, still imparts a force directly under the tripod. And now that your control authority has been severely reduced by these guys, the wind can now mess about with your tripod more effectively. A possible solution would be to add weights to your tripod to slow down wind-induced vibrations. It helps, but it's nowhere near perfect. For example, my system still can't function in winds above 10 knots. Now, something else that can also mess with your panning would be the temperature. Yep, you heard me right. Temperature now becomes an issue. A big one, too. That's because the effectiveness of the rubber band trick is heavily dependent on fluid resistance in the fluid head. And here's the problem. Fluid resistance can change depending on temperature. For the tripod I have, the optimal temperature range is somewhere between 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Colder than that, it begins to stiffen up too much. To deal with it, a quick and easy method is just to turn it around a few times to wake up the fluid and you'll be good for a few minutes. Simple enough. But on warmer days, things become more complicated. As heat increases, the fluid in the head begins to lose its thickness, making it easier to overpan and overcompensate. And trying to cool the tripod will require more resourceful ideas. To show you how unorthodox these ideas may become, here's what I do. Take a damp rag, wrap it around the tripod head, and water it periodically. One can go further by inserting ice cubes instead, but that will be up to you. Remember, be resourceful. Now, some of you may have noticed that I actually have two rubber bands. The main reason being that each can be used in different temperatures. On hot sunny days, I will use the shorter thinner band to compensate for a more sensitive tripod. On a colder day, I may use the longer thicker one. And I can even link both of them up, which, by the way, may offer a few benefits. Imagine filming something like a plane. I need to pan slowly at first, then quickly. As I begin panning with a small force, the short band takes the load, while the longer band isn't doing much. But as I pull harder, the short band elongates up until it's the same length as the long band. By this point, the short band is under such a heavy load that if it keeps elongating, it will eventually snap. This is when the long band finally starts working, taking some of that heavy load from the short band until the force demand decreases. Also, having two rubber bands allow one to serve as backup in case one fails, because ultimately that will happen, possibly when you're filming. Therefore, it's always a good idea to check on their condition and test them out before filming something important. All this shows how complicated this method may become, 
and perhaps it's too much work and trouble for a slightly more stable footage. But if you're crazy for stability, feel free to try it out. Practice, and most importantly, be patient. You'll need it.